Hello, my name is Dr. Hodayim, and we're going to go through the different steps of the rapid on-site evaluation uh, for EBUS cases. Um, so the first thing we want to do is make sure your basket is ready. The basket should always have a slide holder, um, uh, bottle holders, a pencil, some extra slides, sometimes a syringe. Uh, and then you want to go to the lab and take RPMI. RPMI is a transport medium. Uh, depending on which institution you are, uh, it might be a different kind of transport medium. The good thing about RPMI is that, is that you can use it for uh, pretty much anything, including flow cytometry. For these bronch cases, you want to take at least eight bottles. You don't want to fill it all the way. Uh, you want to fill it like halfway. And remember, to take some extra ones as well. Remember to label the RPMI with an expiry date. And if you open a new bottle, you have to label the date that you opened it. And these are in uh, coordination with the CLIO laws for uh, labs. So this is somewhat like what your basket should look like. This is somewhat what your um, uh, bottle holder might be and your RPMI, and as you can see, the dates have been written. Depending on the location that the EBIS is taking place, you will probably have to do the following. You might want to take a cart to put all of your items on. If you're going into an OR station, you might need to bunny up. Um, or if you're going into a place that's using radi radiation, you want to make sure and find out if you need to be wearing lead. Uh, fill the container with water to uh, rinse off your slides. And once you get into the room, don't forget to request a number of patient labels. You want to confirm that the patient is correct, the MRN number is correct, the date of birth is correct. You want to set up your station by plugging in the blow dryer, the microscope, open your staining containers, and prepare to begin uh, the procedure. You also want to label your patient's uh, slides. And these should be with two patient identifiers usually a date of birth and uh, the patient's name. Depending where you work, you may wanna be dividing the slides between pap stain and diff quick, so you want to label accordingly. For each station that they will be taking, you want to label the RPMI correctly with the station number and put the patient label. This is somewhat what you might have it looking like. Your microscope, your blow dryer, here's the staining, here's the water to rinse it off, here are some towels, uh, here are some gloves in case you need it, some extra, paper, uh, towels, and so on and so forth. This is somewhat how the um, sample station might look. We've covered these for to cover the patient identifiers. You want to have a pencil for your slides, a, a marker to write the station, and to label the, 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 uh, the bottles, and have them in order and ready to go. So in the OR, they are usually go fairly fast. They may not always wait for you to wait for you to tell them if it's adequate or not. It's important just to keep up so as not to mix up the samples. Each sample should use a new RPMI uh, bottle. Uh, so it's a good idea to have an idea what's, what station they are and what their lymph nodes that they're taking are, 12, L, 11, L, 10, L, 4, L, 2, L for the left, and so on and so forth. Um, this is helpful just for you to keep track of where they are. They often will give you the stylets, and you want to put one single drop on the, on the slide and the rest into RPMI. Remember to smear the slides gently. Practice smearing slides before you actually go and do it. You want to use the other slides to keep the blood from spraying everywhere in the sample getting lost. Dry the slides with the blow dryer, stain them. The staining procedure will be according to the type of hemodiff or diff quick staining or whatever it is you are using. Some people actually use hematoxin and neosin. Uh, don't overstain. Uh, the last step is to tell them if it's adequate or not. When to call it adequate. If it's borderline adequate, call it inadequate. Don't give a diagnosis unless you're prepared to sign a preliminary diagnosis. And don't think out loud. If you think out loud, they might actually write your thoughts into the chart. So what is it adequate? It's adequate if you have tumor. It's adequate if you have granulomas. It's adequate if you have enough lymphocytes because that means that they have adequately sampled the, uh, the node. Here are some examples of adequate. This one has lots and lots of tumor. You can just see those. That looks like adeno, right? Lots of small cells for small cells, a carcinoma, or lots of squamous. So these are all adequate examples of tumor cells. Don't forget that some tumors can be metastatic and also large cell neuroendocrine. Lots and lots of lymphocytes. That looks pretty good. They got a decent lymph node. Granulomas. That's possible too. Now, when is it non-adequate? Well, if you only get a whole bunch of bronchial cells, then they haven't reached the lymph node. Goblet cells, superficial squamous cells, macrophages, debris, all of these are examples of, of, not, of inadequate sampling of the lymph node. 
Uh, what if it's wrapped up in a clot? Nope, it's still inadequate. Lots of ultrasound gel, that's inadequate. Lots of necrotic debris, that's inadequate. It's okay to ask for help if they need a preliminary diagnosis, if you're unsure if it's adequate or not, or the clinician wants a second opinion. Now for lymphoma, you want to prepare that the pro to follow the procedure for flow cytometry, whether you need to divide the samples or provide the um, paperwork, and in some places you may need to actually put the order in for flow cytometry yourself. If you are not planning on staining right away, you can always uh, rehydrate uh, the pap slides. And to do that, um, you can follow the rehydration uh, method, which is provided in another uh, lecture. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to uh, send me.